Brighton, um, a defeat, disappointing one. Um, they probably deserved it over the 90 minutes, do you think? Yeah, but we didn't give away too much in open play. We're obviously disappointed with the uh, uh, with the first goal coming from the corner. Um, but uh, we'd started actually the game quite well. Just were a little bit impatient when we get into the middle third and trying to force the pass too early. Um, but um, but we, we were comfortable with the ball. Just had to work our way through. They get the goal, uh, which is as I said disappointing. But then we. We started to uh, to penetrate that a little bit more and, and break through their, their lines better. The keeper makes a great save, you know, but, yeah. but which looked like it was in all the way, and he's done that to us in a few games this this season. So, um, so yeah, but at half time we're still in the game, and we know we can be a threat. In the second half, we're I'm disappointed with the penalty, to be honest. I don't want to go on too much about referees, and I've seen a lot this season. We had. We had one given against us at, uh, at West Ham, uh, uh, against West Ham, but uh, but that there was, was 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 disappointing in terms of you know I don't know what else Kai can do his his, his movement and uh, it's maybe just touched his mm. touched his hands up, but it was purely accidental. So uh, so then at two 0 it's difficult, you know you uh, you're chasing the game a bit, um, obviously a little bit of tiredness in the last. 15, 20 minutes, a little bit, um, but no, I think they deserve to win the game. Um, they took the two chances, but our spirit was there. We kept going, we kept working, and uh, like I said, their keeper made a one or two saves that could have made the game a uh, scoreline different. The disappointment of conceding from a corner is something you've experienced probably too many times this season. I think it's a dozen now or something. I read that, that you've conceded from corners. That's yeah, too yeah. many, obviously. Yeah, yeah, it's a way too many. You got to. Uh, you got to have more commitment to to keep the ball out of your goal. It's as simple as that. Um, he gets a run on uh, party and, and gets across the front. It's a good leap and uh, good delivery to deliver into the first post, and he he gets the header. So um, so yeah, we're disappointed with that. Um, obviously, you, all season you've had players coming in and out with injuries and stuff, and um, no for fun. It's, um, no for fun today. We know he's getting closer. Are you going to be able to? Bring him back in finally at some point sooner rather than later. Do you feel? Yeah, hopefully in our midweek game uh, mm. we, we should be able to uh, to play him. He should have played on the Thursday. Unfortunately, it was a positive case. So, um, but now he, he hopefully will be okay. So, so that'll be that'll be really good. Getting JJ back. We're obviously with the full backs. We're having to, you know, they can't play ninety minutes. So we're having to, you know, to to interchange them one sixty and one thirty. So. Uh, and that limits you a little bit on your attacking subs you've got to make because before you have to make a, a change. So, uh, so yeah, but we'll, we'll start to get players back and hopefully after the international break uh, we'll be close as well uh, to having hopefully everyone and then, uh, like I say, try and finish the season as strong as we can. Yeah, 15 points worse off than this stage last season. Uh, let's clear up the penalty then, he's, he's not happy. Has he got a case at all? It's a penalty for me. I think uh, it's... it's it's a little bit unfortunate, um, but it touches his hand, so, you know, and it's going in, I, I, it, you know, it's, it, it brushes it, but when you see the trajectory of the ball, it does change, you just see the spin change there, so, so it is a penalty, he, he, he'll be disappointed of course by it, but I'd be more disappointed by it not clearing the first the first ball in to be honest you know that's what I'd be concentrating on absolutely yeah that's that's where his anger should be rather than the officials who sub his players again for not being in the correct position for not attacking the ball again from a set piece because if they had of they wouldn't have been in that situation in the first place bigger picture for Leicester as I say there's 15 points worse than last season mm -hmm. heard him talk about the inconsistencies because of injuries and for Farner does he almost just want this season to bed and, well, that, and start again and try and recruit. Yeah, um, that's what I saw from their performance today. It was lacklustre, there was no energy, there was no spark in them, there was no desire really to try and come back um, into, the, uh, into the game. There was no real desire at all to, for someone to go and get on the end of those set pieces from, from what, they, what they conceded from. There are mitigating circumstances, obviously. The, the injuries that they've had, they've probably been hurt more than most, uh, particularly in that, uh, in that back line. Also missing their, right. their main player in terms of Jamie Vardy because he gives them so much energy, so much 
going the other way and running in behind and stretching teams. So there are mitigating circumstances, but with the team that he had out today, that still should be doing better. Yeah, I think these. I think their minds are on Europe. I really do. Uh, they look like a team that were sort of coasting along as if it was the last four games of the season. They're in mid-table. That's how they looked. I think um, they've missed key players. Of course, they have, and, and even the top team season actually. Um, but I think their minds are now set on where can we be successful. If we come out, how are we going to have a good season? Well, we're not going to get ourselves into Europe. But this is. They've got to put every egg in that basket of Europa and go for it. And I think you'll see a different energy. A little bit of a refresh and a reset to that squad. Yeah, he needs to. A little bit of a refresh and a reset to that squad. Yeah, he needs to, I think, in my opinion. I think uh, looking at them today, they, they look a little bit stale. Um, there's nothing on the bench they can bring, nothing different. Um, the centre half, so there's nothing on the bench they can bring, nothing different. Um, the centre halves, obviously, Fafana, Evans, big misses. Watching it today and watching them, they, they don't really have one at the minute. Um, so, you know, he'll have some ideas in mind of what he wants to do, and I think you'll probably you'll see a bit of a shake up in the summer with Leicester. Yeah, I, I, I agree with when, when Brendan said he needs a bit of a, a freshen up in the summer, there's no doubt about that. I agree with when, when Brendan said he needs a bit of a, a freshen up in the summer. There's no doubt about that. From where they were last season to what's happened again, that that tells you that he needs to to clear four or five out and bring four or five new, fresh faces in, big players who can get them back to where they feel as if they belong. They were punching above their weight. There's no doubt about that in terms of their budget and who they are and what they are. There's no doubt in terms of their budget and who they are and what they are. There's no doubt because of the success they had last season, it's always going to be very difficult to keep on mixing it with the big boys and flirting around four, five and six position. Um, but they want to be the best of the fifth or sixth spot. But to, to do that, they need to refresh and they need four or five new players who will give them new energy and, and new belief. OK, well, talking of new belief, Arsenal have got that at the moment. Back into fourth spot. Here's their manager, Mikel Arteta. Mikel, when we spoke before the game, you said you were looking for improvement. Two clear goals this time and a clean sheet. So was that improvement that you clearly got a result of a better performance? Absolutely. I think without a performance, you don't beat uh, Leicester. Uh, I think they are a really good side. They make it uh, tough for us and we have to raise the level of uh, that way we showed against Watford. And I think we certainly have done it today. Every aspect of the game, I think, and, um, and it's a big win for us. Did you have dig deep, deep, though? Because midway through the first half, Leicester got a good foothold in the game. Yeah, they got a bit of control of the game, and uh, we suffered a little bit in certain situations without conceding a lot of chances. One chance that I can remember, we didn't manage regains very good. We lost a little bit of control. We could not take the game to the final third. Uh, and in the second half, I think it was much better again and much more controlled. When it went to VR, you looked as though you were fairly certain it was a penalty. Was that always the case? Yes, because I nominated one person in that bench to ask him that I think he can be cool and and and, uh, and a cool head, and and he said it's definitely a pen. So I was expecting to get it. Much to admire about your side today. What do you in particular like? The understanding of what we had to do during the game. Um, when they were more flat and the spaces we have to attack, when they started to be more aggressive, when they started to overload certain areas on the pitch, especially in the final third, how we have to resolve that, um, especially the understanding and obviously the execution. We had moments where the speed of the ball, the understanding, the the um, the movement, the link between the players, it was it was terrific. You've said to us every time we ask about Champions League football, game by game, game by game. Is that because you don't want to put pressure on your players? No, it's because it's the reality in football. Because if you start to make a uh, prediction of what it can happen, I think uh, no one in this room would, would get it right, probably. So the only thing we can control is performances and, and the next game, and, and that's what we are focused with. But what sort of position have you put yourselves in to finish very hard at the table? Yeah, very good position. But, uh, but uh, there is still a lot to fight for. And now it's Liverpool, and we know how tough it's going to be, and we have to prepare the game to win it. You've got a very young side. Do they play with a, a fluidity and a freedom that brings you particular joy? I hope they do because they, they do what they love in, in their life. So they have to play with that freedom, with that passion, with that fluidity because if not, they have to do something else. So we always encourage them to play like this.
it looks as though because they're all very very young or so the majority there's a real camaraderie there there is you know you you can sense it you can feel it uh, they really having a good time together and and i think that transmits on the pitch lastly hasn't scored in the last nine but he's been doing tremendous work elsewhere but are you pleased that Lacazette was on the score sheet today. Absolutely, and he deserves it again for the work he does, understanding how much he helps us in many different areas. But uh, today he's done scoring a, a good goal again. Premier League games this season where they were in the bottom three seem a long time ago yeah. for Arsenal. Is, is that just a show of patience and support for a manager and what he can do over a period of time? Yeah, that first game, Brentford, wasn't it? Mm. Um, they, there were a few panic signs um, without a doubt, the way they conceded the goals, their performance was really poor. But he deserves a lot of credit, Arteta, because he's been able to manage the way he wants. He's been able to make decisions that he has wanted, and it's been tough at times. He's had to leave players out, difficult players, for different reasons. Um, but I think what, what has helped him more than most is having that young squad, the ability of the young, those young players to put them in on the first team stage and trust them and say, go and play, go and enjoy your football, go and, if you have to make mistakes, that's fine, but just go and express yourselves. And I think he made that point really clearly there, as I have to say, they've got a, they've got a good group now who they, they, he can trust. He believes in, the, in them all. He's been able to get rid of players who he wanted to get out of the football club for obvious reasons. And I think that has enhanced the, uh, the ability and certainly enhanced the attitude in that squad. And when a manager goes and puts his head on the pillow at night, how important is that word trust that you've got players you think, I'm, I'm, I'm good with those now, I'm all right. That, that's a great feeling, but I think now, I think the play, it's the other way around as well. I think now the players trust the manager. They're buying into what he wants because it was he was under the cosh early doors, wasn't he? He was under pressure, as they say, for a few weeks. You lost, you know, and then it was somebody else uh, the week after. That's how it is in management. But no, he steadied the ship. He's got them playing with that free-flowing football. Um, they're a young group of players now. I think they're they're good players. They're good young players that will be tested against Liverpool in the week, for instance. Then we'll see when they get tested with the bigger teams whether they can cope being young and a little bit inexperienced. Those players, those good players can become very good players. And eventually, are they going to be great players? That's where Arsenal are at the moment. The potential is there. It's there, it's in touching distance. Whether they can guide, you know, you can guide them through, whether they can stay a little bit injury free, because look at Leicester today, we've just gone through all the injuries they've had. I think if they lost a centre back, that might give them a problem. And I think if they lose a striker, it'll give them a problem. So there's a lot of permutations that have got to happen with Arsenal, but they're, they've got the potential there to go on the stepping stone to go into he made a huge really call. strong team. He made a huge call with the Obama, Obama Young situation, getting him out with the football club. Uh, and that decision had to work because people were would be ready to pile in on that decision because of the way Aubameyang's gone to Barcelona, scored goals. Yeah. So that decision had to work. So at the minute, it's worked. The big, the bigger picture will be: can they get that fourth position come the end of the season? Yeah, not too many. Just to round up on this one, would have predicted Arsenal winning nine of eleven without Aubameyang at the time. No, I don't think so. But as you say, in hindsight, it, it look everything looks great. The, the group is happy. All that you can see that you know when they celebrate a, a goal or you know the way they communicate with each other. And just today, it, it just was a joy to watch. I think that the way he set them up, they obviously executed it. He said in his interview afterwards, that's what pleased him the most that that they understood what he was asking of them and, and then went and executed it. So you know. Lacazette's playing well. Um, obviously, he hasn't scored for you know before today for a while, but I think he's integral to what the, what they're trying to do with the high wingers and him dropping in into the you know the ten position. Um, so at the minute, it looks like it was a, it was a good decision. You know, next season going forward, we'll see where they end up at the end of the season. They might need some something else up top. You know, if they're going to make Champions League and and then try and you know battle on a few fronts. Indeed.